around 11.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I'm going over, let me check, uh, active reconnaissance. Uh, I already went pa uh, on passive reconnaissance uh, on my last video. Today I will be talking about uh, active reconnaissance. Let me go ahead and uh, reset this room real quick. Get started with um, the introduction. Uh, in the first room of the network security module focused on passive reconnaissance. Uh, in the second room, we focus on active reconnaissance and the essential tools related to to it. Uh, we learn to use a web browser to collect more information about our target. Moreover, uh, we discuss using simple tools such as ping, traceroute, telnet, and uh, NC uh, to gather information about the network system and services. As we learned in the previous room, passive reconnaissance lets you uh, gather information about your target without any kind of direct engagement or connection when you don't have any kind of direct engagement or connection that is called passive and uh, you are watching from afar and or checking publicly available information as anyone uh, else uh, without being any uh, suspicious so the active reconnaissance requires you to make uh, some kind of contact with the target this contact can be a phone call or visit to the target company under some uh, pretends to gather more information, usually as part of social engineering. If you use social engineering, that is given as, you know, uh, active reconnaissance, since you are making some kind of contact contact with your target. So alternatively, it can be a direct connection to the target system, whether visiting their website or checking if their firewall, firewall has an SSH port open. Uh, think of it like a closely inspecting windows and doors, uh, door locks, and hence it is essential to remember not to engage in uh, active reconnaissance work before getting signed legal authorization from the client. If you do this without having legal authorization, you are breaking the law and you will go to jail, so make sure you get the uh, legal authorization before you conduct your you know, ethical or hacking or penetration testing. So in this room, we focus on re uh, reconnaissance. Active reconnaissance begins with the di direct connection made to the target mach machine. Um, I'll go ahead and let you guys read everything. I need to answer the questions, especially in later tasks. And let's go ahead and complete that since we already. But let's go ahead and start with our attack box. So task two is web browser. The web browser can be a convenient tool, especially that is uh, readily available on old systems. Uh, there, there are several several ways uh, where you can use a web browser to gather information about a target. On the transport level, the browser connects to TCP port 80, uh, and then 80 is HTTP, and HTTPS is 443. Uh, this is um, use the T TCL TSL over SSL, SSL over TSL. Uh, pretty much, this is encrypted, and this sends the information through clear text. So if you uh, um, in a room, if you could get in between this connection, you could actually see the clear text of the connection or the request is. Um, while uh, browsing a web page, you can press Control Shift I on a PCO Option Command I. All these uh, signs on your keyboard. If you use a Mac to open the developer tools, uh, for instance, if I go to what's uh, okay, if I just go to Google, if I want the uh, developer tool, all I have to do is Control, Shift, and I, and I should get the developer tool with the, you know, the console, the inspector, debugger, network, style editor, uh, memory, storage. Yeah, that's pretty much what the idea is. Um, am I on it yet? Okay. Mm, where am I right now? Similar shortcuts will also get you started with Google Chrome and Chromium. Developer tools lets you inspect many things that your browser has received and exchanged with their remote server. For instance, you can view and even modify the JavaScript files and inspect the cookie set on your system and discover a uh, folder structure of the site content. Uh, below is a screenshot of Firefox developer tool, uh, Chrome uh, dev tools is quite similar. Uh, there are also plenty of add-ons uh, for Firefox and Chrome that will help you uh, in penetration testing. Here are a few examples. The Foxy Proxy, that one, I, I actually use that, the Foxy Proxy. It's turned off right now, but 
whenever I'm trying to use a burp, a burp suite, I just switch it to burp. And then the, once my intercept is on, then I get to kind of catch um, uh, whatever request that I'm doing. And then I get to forward it or drop the request based on, you know, my interest. Uh, Foxy Proxy is very easy to use, and I recommend you guys to actually use that. Um, a user agent switcher and manager gives you the ability to pretend to be accessing the web page from a different operating system or a different web browser. In other words, you can pretend to be browsing the site uh, using an iPhone when, in fact, you are accessing it from uh, Mozilla Firefox. Uh, that's actually cool. It's done. The other one is um, Wapplizer provides insight about the technology used on visited website, uh, especially if you are in the web application pen testing uh, environment, you might need that. Uh, I have it right here. It kind of gives you a more analytic uh, view and the framework that um, the website that you're visit visiting uses. Uh, so it's kind of good. I never really used it like that. Um, browse the, the following website and ensure that you have opened your developer tool on attack box fire. Firefox on or the browser on your computer using developer tool figure out the total number of questions So let's go ahead and follow this website Okay, this is TCP and IP chat you have the signalization Can you hear me Bob and when you send that uh, was sent to actually? Um, you don't have to answer these questions. All you have to do is uh, right click and you can actually go ahead and control if you are using Firefox go ahead and Press Control, Shift, and I. I'll put this on the video. And uh, once you click on that, I probably would go to let's go to uh, Inspector. That's not it. The console, maybe Debugger. Um, yeah, for Debugger, we have the questions. We have one, two, um, with the answer, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight, the total of eight questions we have were answers. So we go ahead and try if this is the right answer. We did, we got it right. Uh, what is the hint they've given us? Uh, locate the JavaScript file, script JS, inspect the file, and figure out the total number of questions. Is that what we did? Uh, that's actually not what, uh, yep, yeah, it is what we did. The script uh, that JS. As a file that we used, and then ping. So, uh, yeah, once you guys uh, read the task tool, uh, it is about ping, is pretty much um, checking if the system is up or uh, if the remote system is online. And you do that by just pinging. Uh, we can go ahead and ping our machine. All we have to do is ping. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 246, uh, 0.9. And then if you get those kind of response uh, response back, then uh, the machine the machine is up. And to force it to stop, you control C it. Um, but let's go ahead and answer this, uh, this question. Um, what option would you use to uh, set the size of the data carried by the ICMP? Echo, uh, echo request, I probably would say taxi. Uh, use the man ping command to consult a uh, ping's manual page. Oh, let's go ahead and try that out. Clear that man ping. What option would you use to set the size of the data carried by the ICMP request? Packet size right here. Specifies the number of data bytes to be sent. Private tag S is the answer. Yep. And then what is the size of the ICMP header and bytes? Um, probably one combined with uh, maybe eight. The, uh, the default is 56, which translates into 64 ICMP data bytes when combined with the 8 bytes of ICMP headed. Okay, so it is 8. And then does uh, Microsoft MS Windows firewall block 
pink by de default. Yes, uh, we got that through the reading. And then deploy the uh, VM for this task and using the attack box terminal, issue the command ping uh, taxi 10, 10, 10. We can just copy that. And they telling us to use the attack box. And yesterday when I used the attack box, it wasn't that um, quick, it wasn't fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and control shift B to paste that. And you get to, um, they, they will probably ping it 10 times since we gave the um, command here saying 10, the syntax. So we have 10 packets transmitted. Um, so deploy. How many ping replies did you get back? It should be 10. And then boom, just like that, we are done with task three and we are on task four. And that will be trace route. I give you guys a second to read it again and I'll be back in a second. So on this one, it talks about how um, we use ICMP to trick uh, the routers. And we uh, add TTL, that is time to live in the head, uh, header. And then the header will, if it, uh, if it leaves with the value of 64, the TTL. And then uh, after passing through four routers, we should get back the, we should have a 60, a TTL. So every time it passes through one router, it drops one TTL. So if, if it leaves at 70 and comes back at 60, then it's going through at least 10 routers, but I'm not sure how ac uh, accurate that information would be, or that answer would be, um, because since uh, some uh, machines use like dynamic routers, so it could, might not be accurate most of the time. So for the question below, uh, it is asking us, uh, it's comparing the trace route uh, we ran on trihackme.com. Uh, we don't have to run it since they already uh, ran the trace uh, trace route and they posted it here uh, trace route a and trace route b uh the trace route a uh tr trace route try hack me.com every time you run it you might not ha have the same um the same answers or the same results uh so we have on the second time we, we run it we have a different result with about 26 um answers and trace route a what is the ip address of the last router or hop before reaching tryhackme.com so all you have to do is go check this out right now and it would be 172 67 208 um that would be the ip address for the router and then and trace route b what is the ip address of the last uh router or hop before reaching tryhackme.com and that would be oh this is the b is the bottom one and it would be the last one right here and answer that and then tr and tr trace route b how many routers are between the two systems uh every stop is uh, a hop or a router so about 26. am i saying that right hop. yeah and then start the uh test vm from task three if it's not already started i think we already started it and on, on the attack box, run trace route 10, 10, 2, 4, 6, 9, and check how many routers or hops are there between the attack box and the target virtual machine. We can go ahead and copy this real quick and run it on our machine. Um, paste the selection and boom. Uh, we have about, whoa, 30 hops max, 60 byte packets. I'm not sure why I stopped got trace route I'm pretty sure you have it yeah we have about 30 I'm pretty sure I got that right and then now we are on telnet uh, as I did earlier I'll just give you guys a minute go ahead and read that out so um for task 5 it's asking us what's the attached uh, VM uh, from task 3 if it's not start the attached VM and then um, I run the telnet client to connect the VM on port 80. So all we have to do is, they actually did that right here. I'm not sure why we have to do it again. But for the sake of uh, answering the questions properly, we can go ahead and uh, run the telnet. 
I will be on 10.10.246.9 on port 80. Okay, and then we could uh, run that. Um, it takes a while to actually uh, run the whole thing sometimes. Uh, let's go ahead and put the get request that they are looking for uh, with HTTP uh, 1.1 and a host word. Okay, host was so net uh, sometimes takes a while. Yeah, I'm not sure it takes a while to answer the bad. Um, I mean, I don't think I actually went through. Uh, it timed out. I'm not sure why it keeps timing out. But we actually do have the answers for some of the... For, we have the server Apache 2.4.10. And um, that is part of the answer, I believe. Uh, what's the name of the running server? That is the uh, Apache. And what's the version of the running server? We can control uh, 2.4.10, 2.4.10, and then we'll go on netcat. Oh, we can go ahead and read that again. Uh, we have a different machine, so let's terminate this machine and then start this one, and I'll be back in a second. So the question for task six is, Start uh, start the VM and open the attack box. Once the attack box loads, the use and and cat to connect it to the VM port eighty uh, port twenty one. What is the version of the running server? Let's go ahead and start the netcat to use and cat uh, netcat. Oh, you have to lose NC uh, and the IP address of the machine, the target machine. 246.86, I got that from the IP address given, and we are using this port 21, stated above, and entrance 220, Deborah 2, TM local file, file transfer protocol server, uh, version 6.4, open SVD, Linux FTP 17 ready. Uh, uh, okay, we're using right here 0 0.17 is the version that we're using. Uh, we don't even have to do a lot for that answer. And boom, we are done with uh, task 6. Um, I have to go over uh, netcat because it's a little confusing. And just to practice the syntax here given to us, especially for um, a reverse shell. I think it talks about the reverse shell here. But on task 7, putting it all together. But we are done with this room. Congratulations, guys. And I'll be back with a different room. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, uh, just leave it at the comment section. I will go over it, and we will go through a different room together. Uh, make sure to, to hit that like button and subscribe.